Okay, so uh, let's continue. So the two types of the nanocomposites I, I briefly mentioned to you is uh, the first one, imagine uh, it's a, uh, a matrix, a polymer matrix that has one or two or three percent by weight or volume of a nanofiller. Now, where does that one or two or three percent come from? That's a very interesting question that we will get to later. Um, the other aspect is the that's low concentration of nanofillers. That, the other aspect is high concentration, in which the dominant phase is the is the filler. So these are different three different lengths of scales. This is a carbon nanotube yarn. This is um, at a slightly higher length, zoomed in. This is extremely zoomed in that you can see individual carbon nanotubes. So here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, here we uh, basically see something that's very similar to the concept of uh, the shear lag that we discussed in, in brick and mortar, although uh, carbon nanotubes are not really always aligned, but to some extent it's a good um, approximation. Now, let's uh, focus on the first one. So basically the uh, low volume fraction. Uh, um, and here I want to tell you first why, uh, make the case why typically the concentration of the uh, nanofiller is, um, is rather low, uh, one or two percent. So in order to make my case, um, I first want to bring your uh, attention to this figure, which is on the next slide, but just uh, to be on the same uh, page, that, that kind of helps us uh, to uh, understand what is going on. So each of these um, fibers that you see uh, is a microfiber. It's a, so the diameter of <clears throat> each of these uh, fibers is in the order of um, five microns, okay? Now, the volume fraction of, of this composite is in the order of 60%, okay, it's a rather high volume fraction. The reason uh, they take you to that high volume fraction is because the, the, the matrix is just a glue to maintain the shape of the structure to protect the comp uh, fibers. But what is actually carrying the load is the fibers that are carrying the load. So you want as many of them as, as you possibly can have, and you want them to be um, um, feel wetted by the matrix so that the matrix can uh, carry load uh, uh, from one fiber to another. So now with this understanding, so 60 volume percent, now let's go to the previous slide. Okay, so imagine you, you have these two fibers or nanofibers at this point. Uh, so the black ones are fibers or nanofibers, and the diameter of them is whatever it, it is. We just show it with uh, D. Now, the matrix is this yellow part that is trying to get in, let's say, from one end, okay? And um, it's trying to get in between, it's trying to wet the, whatever is in between the fibers, the two fibers. Um, now, uh, it has to go through the space in between fibers, right? Um, now, <clears throat> what determines this space? Um, for the same length, let's keep the length the same. The adhesion between fibers scales roughly, I would say, with d to the power of one. So basically, if I have one fiber here, and another fiber here, the adhesion between them is proportional to this area of contact between them, which more or less scales with diameter. Okay, so smaller diameters, if I reduce the diameter by 10 times, the adhesion force or energy goes down by 10 times, roughly. We're ignoring, the reason I say approximately is because so the reason I put a range for it is because I am ignoring the fact that fibers can bend like this at the uh, location of the contact slide. Um, but there's another thing, which is the bending stiffness. 
Uh, think about fibers as cylinders. This cylinder has a bending stiffness. This cylinder has a bending stiffness. And the bending stiffness, as you may know from uh, solid mechanics, uh, scales with EI. And uh, I is the second moment of area, which scales with this D to the power of four. Okay. So if you can consider these two, adhesion wants to bring fibers together. But if, if, if two fibers are touching each other at one point here, and then they want to touch each other at, the, at a different point here, unless these two fibers are perfectly aligned, which is very unlikely, um, one of them has to be bent. So that means the larger the diameter, it's going to be more difficult for them to um, bend and fill the gap between, uh, reduce this length of or width of this gap. And that's because the bending stiffness goes with d to the power of four, whereas adhesion goes at d to the power of an average, let's say one. In other words, when I go from five microns to 100 nanometers, if the length of the fibers is the same, my fibers become very compliant, but the adhesion doesn't drop as much. Fibers become, if, if the diameter goes down from, let's say, 5 microns to 500 nanometers 10 times, the adhesion goes down by, adhesion force goes down by 10 times, but the bending stiffness goes down by 10,000 times. So now, the, now that adhesion force has more power to bend the fibers and bring them close together and fill the gap between them. And so that now, compare, now bring, so that closes the gap between the fibers. Now uh, bring to picture the Poiset law that the, now this fluid, the resin, whatever it is, the matrix, wants to flow in between the fibers. Let's say we're talking about the thermoset. Uh, that is initially liquid. Now that guy wants to fill those gaps. Now for nanocomposites, it becomes way, way more difficult because the gap is going to be smaller. Unless something else happens, which I take you to the <coughs> next slide here. Um, the building block of of this composite, on average, you can say a portion of the matrix that is here belongs to this fiber. On average, you can, um, with a little bit of imagination, uh, you can, um, you can uh, replace, the, you can assume this is like that. Okay, now the thickness has to be adjusted for based on the volume fraction um, and the volume, Um, sorry for the noise in the background. And, and the volume fraction, and the volume fraction, uh, just you can calculate it from here, it's gonna be the ratio of this volume over this volume. For the same length, it's gonna be the ratio of this area over this area or that, or simply this equation. That is the volume fraction of the fibers. So then I can uh, calculate the thickness of this, the, the thickness of the matrix that is the share of each fiber and just by rewriting this equation. And so now for the case of a diameter of five microns and volume fraction of 60%, the thickness becomes roughly about 700 nanometers. So, and why do I say, why do I put these numbers? Because in the case of microfibers, that the diameter is five microns, volume fraction is 60%, we can get to the, we, the, uh, we can fill this gap, okay? This gap between fibers, if I wanna draw things to scale here, is gonna be one, five micrometer, and, and another five micrometer. And this gap here is about 700 nanometers. 
that the resin can uh, flow through and go from this here to here and fill the, uh, or, or actually, actually go through the board and, and fill the fibers. So if I take that 700 nanometers as the minimum gap that is required, um, and so I keep this at 500, 700 nanometers, and I reduce the diameter to 500 nanometers of the filler, I realize that the volume fraction that I can afford is only about 1.7%. In other words, um, if I want to go above this volume fraction, my nanofillers have to be much, much closer to each other, and filling them is going to be awfully more difficult. I'm going to stop here and continue next.